Well, I think what we heard from Disney that made a difference was they gave you cash flow guidance that made people feel more comfortable with the valuation. And you also heard that they're going to spend less on content going forward. And again, like it feels to us, and you said this before about streaming, there was just overspending on streaming. People were throwing money at it left and right. And it feels to me that there's some rationality coming back and that Disney is going to spend less on cash content spend. And that's going to basically drive free cash flow. And to me, if you look at Disney's earnings, it's essentially a parks company. So yeah. I don't want them blowing money on streaming if there's no return on capital. So I'm pretty happy with this outcome because we've been saying forever, like this is a parks company and media is becoming less and less important here because it's going down every day in terms of profitability, as you know very well. So is it important to you to know whether they're in or out of streaming? A lot of people have said, I want to know, you know, their strategy in regards to streaming. Netflix obviously also spends like a drunken sailor on content creating, but Netflix rules the roost, right? So, I mean, what's the point of spending less? Why not just be out of it? Well, they can't, at this point, they can't be out of it. They, you know, their view is that Disney plus, that Disney should have a direct relationship with consumers as they do in the theme parks, right? And for the long history of media, Disney never knew its its true consumer, right? It was always a third party was doing distribution. So I think Disney can't be out of it. The question is, how much should Disney be in it, right? Should they be competing with Netflix or should they be a smaller, more targeted service for Disney super fans? And that's been our contention all along. You don't have to be Netflix. You have to make a Disney Plus product for your core fans. There's less of them. You can charge more money. That's probably a better business. And we've been saying that. Like, do not be Netflix. It's not a business you want to be in. And they're listening, I think. I think they're realizing that they have a great, great business model as is, and they need to basically just make sure their fans are being nourished, you know, and not overspend on things that are not core. All right, so if they're gonna be focusing on their core fans primarily through their uh, parks business, what do you do with all the other stuff? They've kind of got a big studio operation. They kind of got a bunch of linear cable and broadcast networks. What do you do with all that stuff? Okay, well, studio is key because you think about, I mean, you've known this for your, your uh, studio is a way to re refresh the characters in the park. Like the flywheel starts yep. with studio and IP. It has to happen. So I watched Cinderella last happen. night, by the way, with my three-year-old daughter. And at one point, uh, one mouse says, let's leave the sewing to the women. And I thought, <laughs> oh, I should not be showing her the 1950 version. <laughs> no, I, well, there's a long list of movies from that era you should not be showing her uh, for that same reason. But, but the viewers, look, We've been debating with the company openly that we don't know why ABC and ESPN need to be part of that new company, right? And the company has not really said what they want to sell. But like our theory is at the heart of Disney is the IP. Then you have consumer products and theme parks and films. But that business is worth a lot. And then the other businesses that you see from valuations of all the peers isn't worth that much, right? They like sports. They like ESPN. That sounds like it's staying. But like there's still an open debate about what do they do with ABC or the Fox assets they bought, and that's not going to end anytime soon. But our point has been it doesn't really much matter because the core is you know studio, film, Disney Plus, and those other assets are so lowly valued that it's not going to matter. You really need to stop the wasteful spending and streaming and focus on the core, which is what we heard last night. So another issue, Michael, uh, is. Bob Iger, we, we, we love him. He's been yeah. great for shareholders. Um, he's kind of put himself in a box once again in terms of timing and succession. Anything new there? Do we read anything into this new uh, external CFO being hired? How do you think about that now? Yeah, it's a good question. The CFO externally is interesting because they, I don't think there's been an external CFO in 25, 30, in a long, long time. So I think that person is going to come in, you, Johnson, from uh, Pepsi, and come in and look at a cost structure. I don't see him... I don't know him, but I don't see that as an air replacement for um, for Bob. I think the question is going to be for the new CFO, where is their wasteful spending? What can he do to, to bring kind of a Pepsi discipline to Disney? But I still think you still have an open an open question about who replaces Bob. It's not easy because of the diversity yeah. of, of operations. You know, we've been saying, look, maybe you break the thing into two again. And I think if that's the case, the park side will, will rise in – in value in terms of the, the management team. But I think as the company stays as Disney, they don't change the structure, it's a hard job to fill. Yeah. I don't think the new CFO 
is on that short list yet because he's never worked in this industry before. Sure. All right, looks like everybody's back to work in Hollywood, first the writers and now the actors. How is this going to play out over the next several quarters in terms of production and releases and all that stuff? That's a good question. Um, I'm amazed that it's been firstly so long, that yeah. the strike has taken so long to resolve because it's been really damaging to the ecosystem. I think people get back to work in the next, well, you have Thanksgiving coming up, right? So probably December, January, you probably get yourself a content slate and output that starts looking more normal by the you know February timeframe. But you basically just had six months of training people not to watch broadcast TV for, yeah. for content. You know, um, not to go to the theaters, right? Anything besides Barbie and Oppenheimer. <laughs> I think it's just really bad. I think people do change behavior and it's hard to get them back. And so, uh, yeah, people will be back working, but I'm, I worry about what happens on the other side of this. I really do.